If you or someone you know has an allergy to food, medication, or animal dander, stay tuned because today we'll do a deep dive into the severe allergic reaction known as anaphylaxis. We'll discuss what triggers anaphylaxis, how symptoms progress, and most importantly, how it's treated. And because we'll do this from an emergency room perspective, there's some good information in here for both patients and nurses. So let's get started. Anaphylaxis is a severe life-threatening reaction. It can start happening minutes after you're exposed to something that you're allergic to. In anaphylaxis, you have an allergen that triggers the immune system to release chemicals that cause the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction. Now, many of these chemicals have fancy, complicated names. But because they all do similar things, I don't think we need to talk about every one of them. But the primary one I wanna mention is called histamine. And the reason that I wanna mention it is because many people take Benadryl for an allergic reaction and Benadryl is an antihistamine, which means it combats the effects of histamine. So big picture, you have an allergen that triggers the immune system to release chemicals, one of which is histamine. And these chemicals do a few things. First, they are vasodilators, which means they make your blood vessels increase in diameter. Vasodilation of many or most blood vessels in the body causes blood pressure to fall. Also, vasodilation of blood vessels makes our blood vessels leaky, so plasma and proteins will escape out of them. And this will cause swelling and edema. And hives are actually little pockets of swelling or edema underneath the skin that look like red welts. These chemicals also cause smooth muscle contraction. Now your bronchioles are made up of smooth muscle and they are the little tubes in the lower part of your lungs that make up your airway. And when the smooth muscle inside them contracts, the bronchioles get smaller in diameter, which means our airway gets smaller in diameter, which increases the work of breathing. So remember how you were breathing fine earlier? Now you're basically breathing through a straw. So let's pretend you have a severe allergy to peanuts and you eat a granola bar that was prepared in a nut packaging factory. And some of the equipment that was used to prepare your granola bar had some residual peanuts on it. Because you're severely allergic, you'll go into anaphylaxis and you'll get these symptoms. And these are more or less the order in which they'll appear. First, you'll get itching, and then you'll get hives and skin redness, and then bronchial constriction will happen, which means your bronchioles will get smaller in diameter and you'll have a harder time breathing. Vomiting, abdominal cramps, and diarrhea will follow, and then your larynx or your voice box will get swollen, and that will occlude your airway. And then because of the widespread vasodilation, your blood pressure will fall. Obviously, we need an airway to breathe and a blood pressure to perfuse our organs. So if this reaction doesn't get corrected, I think we can assume what's gonna happen. Diagnosis is based on symptoms and physical exam. And typically, patients will report being exposed to some sort of allergen. The first method of treating anaphylaxis is giving epinephrine intramuscularly, which means through a shot. It is the most important treatment. And for most people, symptoms will start to resolve after one dose. And this is why people that have severe allergies carry an EpiPen with them. That way they can inject themselves. Oxygen will be administered through a non-rebreather mask, and the patient's airway will be monitored for any kind of upper respiratory compromise. And if the patient shows any signs of respiratory compromise, like severe swelling of the tongue, lips, uvula, or if there is stridor or significant voice changes, 
The patient just bought themselves a tube and will be intubated and placed on a ventilator. IVs will be inserted and nurses, you're gonna want two large bore IVs, so 18 gauge or greater. Patients with low blood pressure that doesn't respond to the epinephrine will receive fluid boluses. And in adults, sometimes these fluid boluses can total up to seven liters. Now let's talk about the med that you've all been waiting for. Benadryl. Antihistamines like Benadryl and also Pepsid can be given and will help alleviate the hives and the itching, but they do not fix the airway or the blood pressure issues. So please do not stay at home and take Benadryl if you're having an anaphylactic reaction and think you're gonna get better, because you're not. The last two meds I wanna talk about are bronchodilators like albuterol and steroids. Albuterol nebulizers may be given to help relieve some of the bronchial constriction in the lungs. And steroids like methylprednisolone and dexamethasone may be given, but the benefit for anaphylaxis is not well supported, and it can take multiple hours for these steroids to start working. If you have any questions related to the content in this video, post them in a comment below. And if you want me to make a specific video, post that in a comment as well. For more emergency room videos, click the link over here. And don't forget to subscribe so you never miss another post.